Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's talk is given by Kevin Haesong Sheridan. So tonight, I'd like to speak to you a little bit about perfection. And uh, really, uh, the title of this whole thing that I wrote was Who Cares About Perfection? I started off with a small story that I'm sure you've all heard before. A Buddhist monk in a monastery had two lodge pots, each hung over each end of the pole that he carried across his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect, always delivered a full portion of water at the end of the long walk from the stream to the master's house. The crack pot arrived only half full. For a full two years, this went on daily, with the monk delivering only one and a half pots full of water to the master. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, perfect to the end for which it was made. But the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was able to accomplish only half of what it had been able to. After two years of what it perceived to be bitter failure, it spoke to the monk one day by the stream. I'm ashamed of myself, and I want to apologize to you. The monk asked, why? What are you ashamed of? Pot replied, these past two years, I'm only able to deliver half of my load because this crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your master's house. Because of my flaws, you don't get the full value of your efforts. The monk felt sorry for the old pot. And in his compassion, he said, as we return to the master's house, I want you to notice the beautiful flowers along the path. As they went up the hill, the old crack pot took notice of the sun warming the beautiful wildflowers on the side of the path. And this cheered him somewhat up. At the end of the trail, it still felt bad because it had leaked out half its water again. And so again, it apologized for its failure. The monk said to the pot, did you notice that there were only flowers on your side of the path, but not on the other side? That's because I've always known about your flaw, and I took advantage of it. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day while we walk back from the stream, You've watered them. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate a master's table. Without being just the way you are, he would have not had this beauty to grace our house. Now, the moral, of course, is that each of us has our own unique flaws. We're all, uh, quote unquote, crackpots. But in this world, nothing really goes to waste. You may think like the crackpot that you're inefficient or useless in certain areas of your life. But somehow these flaws can turn out to be a blessing in disguise. From a Buddhist viewpoint, the ideal of wanting to be perfect is kept in place by attachment to ourself as a separate, exclusive, individual person or being. Disregarding that we are human beings living in samsara, an endless cycle of birth, old age, sickness, and death, which lures and baits this idea called perfectionism. We're tempted by things like anger, jealousy, desire, ignorance, and pride to stay attached. Individuals with the desire to be perfect, forgetting we live in this cycle. Trapped in a lure of superiority, believing that they are individuals that are weak when they experience afflictions and suffering. Many feel shame for not being as perfect as they perceive those around them to be. Many seek approval from those they feel are more perfect than they are in order to feel adequate and whole. And there are still many that try to hide behind a perfection facade eventually becoming addicted to things that will provide a short parenthesis of relief from their inner torment, such as food, 
drugs, sex, to numb the pain. Looping mistakes over and over, rather than embracing and learning from them, can be a fractal of the very cycle of samsara we live in. And so many quietly suffer. Thoreau's famous quote that the mass of men and women live lives of quiet desperation was not off the mark. As Buddhists, we are fortunate, though. We have many guides, past and present, to show us that instead of trying to deny or hide imperfections, that acknowledging them mindfully can lessen the power they have over us. In order to do this first step is to consciously notice your expectations and thoughts of self-judgment. The goal is to acknowledge those thoughts as soon as they arise, like a watcher quietly observing and letting go, just passionately and without judgment. Remember, expectations are just premeditated resentments. It takes practice not to get caught up in a tangled web of these types of thoughts and desires. A good way to understand the onset of these tendencies is to recognize where you feel the associated emotions within your body. Like an early warning system, a tight sensation in your chest, an upset stomach, a tension headache can all help you explore these inclinations further. By identifying your body's feeling and linking them to the effect of self-critical thoughts, they then become a warning that you can release as soon as they arise. Of course, meditation, breathing, and surrendering these thoughts and desires is always good preparation as well. Sort of like a proactive way of looking at things. The benefits of this is to counteract profession is so powerful. Meditation, after all, grounding, compassion provoking and comforting that we give to ourselves. Now extend this compassion to all that suffer from perfection around you. Stephen Hawking, I'm sure you are all familiar with, believed that one of the basic rules of the universe is that nothing is perfect. Perfection simply doesn't exist. Without imperfection, none of us would exist. Acknowledging leaning into our imperfections with compassion without judgment leads to tenderness and openness. Fighting fire with fire only burns the whole world down in the end. So I leave you with this. It's one of my favorite quotes on the topic from Bob Marley. He was once asked about perfection, and I love the answer he gave. A reporter asked him, Bob, is there such a thing as a perfect woman? And he replied, who cares about perfection? Even the moon is not perfect. It's full of craters. The sea is incredibly beautiful, but salty and dark in its depths. The sky is always infinite, but often cloudy. So everything that is beautiful isn't perfect. It's special. Therefore, every woman can be special to someone. Stop trying to be and look for perfect. Instead, try to be free and live, doing what you love, not wanting to impress others. Thank you for letting me be of service to my sangha.